Hi, I'm Chad with Turf Organics, and this is how to deal with crabgrass in your St. Augustine lawn. Let's get into it. A couple big reasons why crabgrass is extremely hard to control here, especially in St. Augustine, is because they can produce up to over 200,000 seeds in a single summer season. The other extremely difficult challenge is that there's no post-emergent herbicides that can kill your crabgrass out of St. Augustine. So what that means is there's no product that you can apply that will kill your crabgrass in not your St. Augustine, which makes it so hard to control. Now another reason why crabgrass is such a pain, probably as you're looking below, you don't really quite know what you're looking at. It looks like some good, nice, thick turf. Well, this is actually all crabgrass. What it does is it grows in a thick carpet-like. And when I say carpet-like, that means it grows so thick that it chokes out anything. Because what you're looking here is this is all crabgrass. And if you look, it has gotten so thick and growing so much, look at this, it's choked out. Everything is dirt underneath. So this, this whole area is all now crabgrass, maybe a little bit of St. Augustine here and there, but 90% crabgrass. So if you kill this, nothing's gonna come back. It's totally bare and dirt underneath. Now crabgrass thrives in thin and bare areas. Now I have several great methods that you can use to help prevent the spread of crabgrass, to help it from not being in your yard and things like that. So I'm gonna go over with these, but before I do, let's identify crabgrass and make sure that you know the difference between your St. Augustine and crabgrass and how to know if you have it in your lawn because they look very similar. What I have right now on the screen is a picture of crabgrass on the right and St. Augustine on the left. And what you can do is you can look between the two, look at the different textures, a little bit different of a color, but the, uh, the biggest notice is a seed pod. Now, sometimes it's always hard to tell pictures, so I'm gonna show next is a couple real life examples of what crabgrass looks inside of a St. Augustine lawn and what you can see from the seed pods. So you see this section right here um, that's a little bare, not doing too well. There's some other weeds mixed in, but this is St. Augustine grass right here in this direct area. When we lean over here now, this is crabgrass. Now the biggest thing giving it away, and luckily they come out really, really quickly, is these seed pods, three prong pods. Now that's a real big identifier. They split into threes up here at the top, which are all separate seed pods. These little black spots are the seed pods on it. So that's how you know. There's different types of grasses that have two, five, four, things like that. But your crabgrass will always have three of these seed pods popping up. So that's your first big identifier. And then when you look, you can see if you pull some out, it's hairy here on the stem. I don't know how good my camera can pick it up, but it's very hairy here, um, and the leaves are, are a little hairy as well. And the texture is kind of rough on it, and you'll see the way they grow. See, it grows off of one stem up, and then it has a shoot here, shoot there. Um, the shoots alternate sides coming up, so that's a really good way. Now that we're looking closer, you can see the two different St. Augustine crabgrass pointy tip, smaller blade, but when you're standing back from a distance, they almost, they look extremely, extremely similar, um, but they grow totally different ways. Now that we've gone over, you can see we have St. Augustine, St. Augustine. As we come, there's some crabgrass mixed in here. Crabgrass, crabgrass. Now this whole thing is all crabgrass coming through here. And then now here we are, there's crabgrass mixed in with St. Augustine. So I just want you to take a good look as you can, now you can kind of start to tell the difference of where the St. Augustine is and where the crabgrass is. So I just want you to get a good look at that. Now that we've gone over crabgrass and you can identify it and know that that's what you're dealing with in your lawn between the carpet-like, the over 200,000 seeds, the no, her uh, no selective herbicides. So you, you see, Chad, there's a lot of big barriers. How the heck do I get rid of this stuff? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now some great home remedies that you can use to get rid of crabgrass. See, now the first one is probably as basic as it can come, but of course, thick turf. Your best defense against any weeds is a thick turf, but it's really important when it comes to crabgrass. Like I said, if you have bare and thin areas, crabgrass will jump in there. So by keeping your turf thick and healthy, it'll avoid the crabgrass from being able to get in there. So keep turf thick and healthy. So the next major thing to preventing or treating crabgrass, which prevention is always gonna be your best way, is going to be there's a little trick with baking soda. So listen to this, this is really, really cool. So now baking soda won't kill your crabgrass, 
But what it'll do is if you just sprinkle a little bit of baking soda in your areas where you have crabgrass, now be warned, it will stress your St. Augustine, not as much. So when you put it on, just try to shake it really carefully on the crabgrass only. That will burn up the leaf blades. Now it won't kill the roots and the crabgrass will come back. But if you keep repeating this process in the summertime, you'll stress it out so much, it'll have a hard time producing these nasty seed pods. Reducing those seeds spreading throughout your lawn makes a world of difference. So again, the baking soda won't kill it, but it'll stunt it enough not to help it seed because what you're gonna wanna do is, you're gonna wanna do that till the winter comes along because the winter is really how you get rid of this stuff. Now, another great tip about the worst grass in the world, I mean, crabgrass, is bag when you mow. If these seed pods are everywhere and you hit it with that mower blade, the seeds are gonna go everywhere. So if you're able to grab it and bag it up and then dispose of it into a trash bag, then that way you're really, really helping by picking up a lot of those seeds. It's not 100%, but between, you know, doing the baking soda and bagging your lawn, it's gonna make a world of difference when this grass is producing over 200,000 seeds. It's amazing that everyone's lawn isn't really filled with crabgrass when you think of it like that. Now you're gonna say to yourself, okay Chad, I'm doing the bagging, I'm doing the baking soda as well. How do I fully get rid of it? So check this out. What it does in the winter is it fully dies. Like I said before, it grows all these seeds so next year you can come back bigger. It doesn't go dormant, it actually dies, which is really, really incredible. So what you can do in the winter time, it's gonna go fully browned out. What you can do in the winter time is you can even just roll it up. Get all that crabgrass out of there. Get with your hands, pull it out, dig it out with the shovel. I don't care. Whatever way works best for you, but get it out of there. Once you get it all out, you're going to want to till up that area. Till up the soil. Make sure the seeds just aren't sitting on top. And then lay sod. Yes, it's okay. You can lay sod in the winter as long as it's not going to freeze. Like that night or the next day, you're okay to lay sod. But lay sod and lay it very, very close and tight. Don't leave gaps. Because between you ripping out that crabgrass, tilling the soil, and then laying sod on top. Ideally, the seeds, all those seeds it dropped, should be too deep in the soil to be able to germinate. And even if they're st still at the top, if you put those pieces of sod, those sod pieces are so thick, they'll get no sunlight. And guess what can't grow without sunlight? Plants. If you knock out the sunlight, then that way there's no possible way that those seeds can germinate and start to grow in the lawn. So that's a great way to prevent it. Now, I said the most important thing is having thick turf. If you get rid of it in a certain area and a lot of the rest of your lawn is thin, you're gonna have problems in those areas as well. Get your turf thick, take care of your lawn, it's really gonna help prevent these things in the future. Now, once it's all gone and your lawn's thick and you've done all those things, pre-emergence is a great way. And what pre-emergence do is help prevent seeds from germinating in the soil. The trick is though, do not use pre-emergence if your lawn is thin or bare. The grass won't fill in. So you can only use pre-emergence on thick turf. So in the spring, I would say actually almost into late winter, very early spring, when your lawn is thick, you can apply a pre-emergent over your lawn, which will help prevent any type of weeds growing, but especially for crabgrass, because once it's in the lawn, you can't actively treat it. So that was how to deal with crabgrass in your St. Augustine lawn. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you, if you have any questions, please comment below. I would love to answer any of your questions. And if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. It means the world to us. Our channel is really growing and people are finding this information useful. So the more liking and the more subscribe, the more our videos will get out there to help people. I hope everybody has a great rest of their day and never has to hear the word crabgrass ever again. <laughs>